Hey guys, uh, Art Ross with Advanced Automation again. Uh, I'm going to shoot a video, just a short one, to explain the difference between uh, flat table manufacturing and point-to-point -point boring. Uh, this is a very common question that I get asked uh, a lot, several times a week. Uh, I know some of the people um, that's been around CNC routers for a long time uh, are used to seeing uh, both types of machines and magazines and on websites and uh, pieces of literature and so forth. Uh, but a lot of people don't really know what the, the difference between them are since they're both CNC routers. So a flat table CNC router uh, is basically a flat table. And uh, the biggest difference between that and the point-to-point -point boring machine is a flat table and the column and rail design that a point-to-point -point is famous for. So you have uh, basically the same area that you would have, the same head configuration that you may have on both machines. Uh, same kind of controller that you would have on both machines. Uh, that could vary a little bit. I'll go. I'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, to stay with the the fundamental difference is the the way that your parts are going to be held down onto the machine. Now, one of the favorite machines that uh, I represent is Decisi Automation from Italy. Uh, they manufacture both styles of machines, as do uh, all, all the major manufacturers have point-to-point -point and also the flat table manufacturing so they can accommodate uh, all types of machining. But this is showing you a picture of a, a flat table CNC router. I'll get a close up to it. Uh, I don't want to confuse you with this thing right here. It's a, a lathe attachment that they've got to the front of this one. But basically, uh, as you can see back here behind it, it's a 4x8 or 5x10 or 5x12 router and then the, uh, the head on it can actually travel up and down the table. So that's basically the uh, flat table design and then I'll show you real quickly the uh, fundamental difference on a uh, machine that's got the pod and rail. Here you have a quite a long machine, it's actually a 10 foot, uh, actually 13 foot bed on this Vega machine and you have uh, pods and rails that are positioned uh, manually or automatically positioned up and down the base of the machine and they'll have cups and clamps for clamping down your uh, various pieces. So you can run uh, flat table, uh, or I mean flat pieces on it as well as uh, solid wood pieces as you've seen there. Uh, but again, uh, the area is the same, but just how you hold your parts down. Uh, some significant differences with a flat table is the horizontal work. While you can still on a flat table use uh, cups on a universal table, have cups that set your parts two inches off the table, so you can come in and do horizontal work, uh, boring, routing, what have you. <clears throat> Even um, you know complex shapes that uh, require sometimes one or one and a half inches below the part for a real full bull nose on a conference tabletop or something like that. So you can accomplish the same thing as a point to point on a flat table with using the pods and uh, just to get the parts up off the table. Typically, uh, people are using universal spoil boards and pulling vacuum straight through the MDF so in that case, you wouldn't be able to get into the to the edge of your part to do the machining, boring, or so, such so forth like that. But uh, on the point-to-point -point, uh, side, where you're suspending your uh, flat sheets after they've been cut on a panel saw, which is uh, the next one I'm going to make, then of course you have all kinds of room to the side, left and right, front and back, uh, depending on your shape or and the si overall size of it to do your machining. Uh, so that's the, the basic idea. Point two is uh, typically uh, your point-to-point -point machines can come in 4x8 areas, like you put a full 4x8 sheet on there, but because of the, the limitations of the pod and rail, you can only hold down so many parts with, uh, say, let's say 12 pods or maybe 16 pods, and then finding uh, the exact location of those pods every time underneath a full sheet becomes quite a headache. So. Uh, I don't know anybody that actually does that. In the beginning, people were trying to add, you know, 24 pods, you know, 6, 8, 10, 10 more rails and uh, 10 or 15 more pods and then spending 10 minutes moving the pods around trying to uh, find a lo the exact location. They also have laser alignment locations so, and then digital readout locations, but predominantly the idea with a point-to-point -point machine is that you would bust your 4 by 8 sheets or 5 by 10 sheets on a panel saw first and then stack those pieces 
on a skid or a pallet and uh, move it to the point-to-point uh, -point machine and, and then one by one reintroduce them into the CNC point-to-point uh, -point machine for doing your machining. Whereas the uh, typically on a flat table machine you would actually move the 4x8 sheet, the bunk of 4x8 sheets, instead of to a, a panel saw you'd bring the 4x8 sheets and introduce them directly to the, uh, the flat table. And then if you were setting them up on pods, you'd still have the same uh, difficulty in figuring out where these pods are going to go in reference to the edge of the 4x8. So that would be the second point is, is that on flat tables, you can introduce the 4x8 directly. On point-to-points, you're generally going to need a sliding table panel saw, a beam saw, or a CNC to bust up the 4x8 sheets. Uh, the third point that I, I briefly mentioned a while ago is the, the programming. Uh, you will find on the point-to-point -point machines that the programming is quite a bit uh, flex, more flexible um, than on a, uh, the programming style on a 4x8. 4x8 uh, flat table machines or 5x10 flat table machines are going to require a CAD CAM system in front of it to arrange all the different parts on the, on the full sheet. And uh, so you, that's where the flexibility is, is on the, the software, Bobcad, CADCAM, AlphaCam, uh, MasterCam, something like that. And then, uh, but something very interesting on the point-to-point -point machines that uh, you don't get with a flat table is, is a uh, macro-driven programming language so that if you're building cabinets, for example, you have an end panel, um, that end panel you'd program at one time, and then you would save an end panel program, and then based on the length and width of the program or your end panel, you would simply call up the end panel program and then change the length and the width. So it's a, a very easy way to, to make programs. You'll have to really scratch your head one time to figure out how to make the uh, individual part, like a door or something like that. And then the next time you introduce that same idea, the same part, then you actually just change the length and the width. And that macro program actually changes all the machining. So one part you may only need a row, two rows of 14 holes. The next part may require two rows of 27 holes, but it figures all that out for you. So if you're a smaller shop and you have a beam saw, a panel saw, and, and that kind of arrangement works for you, uh, then uh, the point to point would work fine. But uh, the trend is flat table uh, manufacturing and uh, being able to put the full four by eight sheets on the table at the same time. So I hope that helps. Uh, stay tuned for more videos, and uh, I'm uh, uploading, trying to upload two or three videos a week to help you out. So uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.